Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be repairing this heavily destroyed Galaxy Tab A. It suffered a substantial impact to the display, smashing the glass and obliterating the LCD behind it. While it powers on, it displays lines of various colours and a strange dripping green image. The whole device is bent, resulting in the SIM tray being stuck in the device. This tablet was purchased on eBay for $59 in its current condition. I've never repaired any Android tablets, so it will be good to see how it compares to the repairability of an iPad. Included in the price was the tablet itself and a USB-C cable. But before we get started, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Looking to repair your Apple gadget? Get 20% off Apple Fix Kits in October 2021 using the code SKIP20 at ifixit.com slash hughjeffries or at the link below. To begin the repair, I'll place the tablet on a heat plate for several minutes. This will heat up the display, which will in turn soften the adhesive below it. Once adequately heated, I can use a suction cup to pull up on the display creating a gap to which I can insert a plastic pick. I will use several to work around the perimeter of the screen, separating it from the frame. The areas where the glass were badly damaged was harder to work with, and given the restraints of the display cable beneath, I'm unable to fold the screen towards the top. This means I'll need to free the top section, which has been badly cracked. In the process, I accidentally turned the tablet on, but we'll deal with that after I get the screen free. After freeing the top section, the display can be lifted off of the tablet. I think it's fair to say this display is totaled. After force shutting down the tablet, I could fold the screen over to reveal the display's cable. After removing the tape covering the connector, the cable can then be detached. Pulling the remainder of the display off, we can see it's got a lot of writing and scribble all over it. It also reveals the tablet's real name, the Tab A3XL. Next, I'll need to unbend the frame. Before doing this, I'll disassemble the tablet a bit further to check the condition of the motherboard and whether the bend is affecting it. There are a lot of Phillips screws that will need to be unfastened to remove the back housing. One hurdle to this is the jammed SIM tray. The bent frame is preventing it from ejecting. So I'll need to unbend the frame first. I did this using a hammer wrapped in a microfiber cloth. This dampened the force and prevents it from scratching the frame. After it had been repositioned as best as I could get it, I could now try and remove the SIM card tray. Without the bend, the SIM card tray came right out. With that, all that's holding the back on is two clips at the top and bottom of the device. Again, I could use my plastic picks to free them. Can you believe it? That's all it took. If you saw my iPad Pro restoration video, you'll know what I mean when I say the iPad is beyond difficult to repair. On the other side of the midframe is all of the other components. The motherboard is located at the top and has been unaffected by the bent frame. In terms of repairability, the motherboard is held down with screws, both cameras and the headphone jack are easily replaceable, and the USB-C port, SD card and SIM reader are modular. The downsides are the buttons are soldered straight onto the motherboard and the battery looks to be glued in place, although only around the perimeter. With our tablet disassembled, I took the opportunity to clean it out. Both speaker grills were crammed with dirt. I also found a piece of paper that had made its way from the outside of the power button through to the inside. Using some tweezers, I was able to pull it out, freeing up the stiff power button. I will also take the time to straighten the housing as best I can. This proved challenging as pushing the back flat would cause the metal above the SIM tray to bend out. Using a hammer again, I could bend it back. The end result looked better, but isn't perfect. With that, it's now time to start reassembling. I will clip the back panel into place and fasten all of the Phillips head screws, securing the midframe to the back casing. While reassembling, I did something I've never done before. I missed one screw. To the right of the camera, there is a hole which I thought was for an ambient light sensor, but turns out this tablet doesn't have one and the hole itself is actually for a screw. 
Fear not, there's already six installed at the top with two clips above the camera, so I'm not worried about it. After installing the screws, I'll remove all of the remaining adhesive on the bezel to prep it for the adhesive which we'll install later on. Turning our attention to the old display, I'll need to harvest this little board. It appears to be controlling the touch portion of the screen. After detaching its two flex cables, I can use a plastic pick to detach it from the screen. Cracking out our new display, we can install the little PCB we just removed from the old one. This panel is refurbished, meaning the glass on it has previously been cracked and someone has installed new glass onto it. This means we're getting the same quality the device had from the factory. After applying some new adhesive to that PCB, we can attach it onto the new display panel and connect its two flex cables. There was already some marks on the back of this display panel, but even using some alcohol, I wasn't able to remove them. It's only cosmetic, so it's not really a big deal. You can see that the old screen and new one look identical, except for its individual serial numbers, indicating this is a true refurbished display. I'll apply some new adhesive to stick our new display to the frame of the tablet. The side bezels are very thin, which makes applying the adhesive difficult. With the adhesive installed, it's time to connect up our new display panel and test out the device before we stick everything down. Pressing and holding that power button, you can see it powers right up. It's time to remove all of the plastic protective film going over our adhesive so we can attach the new display. For the side pieces, I'll need to fold them around the corner like I'm doing here. This will ensure the screen fits as my adhesive is slightly bigger than the side bezels. I'll also take the time to clean off any dust or fingerprints left on this mid-frame using a microfiber cloth. With the adhesive ready to go, I can line up the display panel and firmly press it down into position. With the tablet back in one piece, there is still one issue to take care of. It's working, but locked with a pin code. I'll need to force restart the tab A and boot into recovery mode. From here, I can factory reset the device. Once complete, the tablet can be set up as new. The last thing left to do is remove the plastic protective film and we're done. So this is it, the Samsung Galaxy Tab A3 XL. Back in a usable condition, this tablet forms part of Samsung's basic A tablet line, similar to their A series of smartphones. While it might not have flagship specs, when it comes to tablets, it's cheap and easy to repair. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the tablet playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.